on time. I don't know. Is there anybody at the dais? We cannot see or hear you. Cannot see or hear us. There we go. We can see and we, hear you. We can't hear you very well. I'll speak up. How about now? Eh, I not well. I can project, but I don't know if that will help. Let's see. Yeah, my volume is all the way up and I can barely hear you. Yeah, it's the same for me. It's it's pretty well. All right. Any what about any other uh, staff or other commissioners? Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Screaming outside. Pretty faint. Still pretty faint. Okay, so we'll have Josh try to. How about now? No. Faint. Because faint. it wasn't plugged Still in. Still faint. Was it plugged in? It was plugged no in, yeah. Testing. 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 One, two, three. Welcome to Milwaukee Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. How about any improvements for our... Just a slightly, tiny. but it's still very wow, you, quiet. You got you both got very loud for us. Oh, so, um, oh this is exciting. We just <laughs> need to reverse that slightly. Maybe turn up our microphones. Um, any still working? And for whatever it's worth, I hear fabric or. Feedback. Hmm. Feedback. Okay. That sounds good. We're going to reset the audio system. Give us a moment. Oh, that sounds promising. I'm going to choose which of these yeah, candies I, which of these three candies I want to, yeah. Turn in. Figure out how many, how many you're allowed to how, eat. How much you have to bicycle home uh, after you eat some of this. That's how fat guys get fat guys. They don't actually read the back. <laughs> and of them is a is a serving that's pretty oh oh no we serving per container 10 sorry oh. <laughs> that's <Also>. another one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't read it correctly. <laughs> uh. lauren gosh are you hearing us any better no no i'm sorry no, I, I, I will say is someone who always comes in uh, via Zoom, you guys are always lower than the people who are online. Um, oh, maybe I'm not used to something. It is, I, I feel like it's uh, uh, like unusually quiet. Yeah, it's lower than it normally is, but it, there's always a different level of, they're always a little bit quieter than those of us who are online, but today is definitely quieter than it normally is. Oh. We still have our audio video visual uh, professionals working on this, so hold tight.
Sure, testing one, two, testing. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Great. Good job, Josh. Now, can we um, can we test Commissioner Hemer's mic? I want to make sure that's at the proper volume as well. Oh, I've, I've disabled. Way, I've is, disabled this, his mic. This is what I love about okay. Lauren. She takes us through every room of her house every time we see her on Zoom. <laughs> this is a new backdrop. And by the way, I love the map in the background. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his mic is way too loud. Way too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we why don't we get this party started? Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to I'd like to call to order the special Valentine's Day uh, meeting of the Milwaukee Planning Commission. Agendas and additional copies of staff reports are available on the city website at www.milwaukeeoregon.gov. You may locate them by navigating to the community calendar, where tonight's meeting page is posted. Um, if you've not reviewed the agenda, please do so. It contains important information about the process. Um, our first order of business is the Native Lands Acknowledgement. The City of Milwaukee respectfully acknowledges that our community is located on the ancestral homeland of the Clackamas people. In 1885, the surviving members of the Clackamas signed the Willamette Valley Treaty, also known as the Kalapuya Treaty, with the federal government in good faith. We offer our respect and gratitude to the indigenous people of this land. Our second order of business is uh, planning commission minutes. Um, moving on to the approval of the December 13th and January 10th, 2023 uh, meeting minutes. Does anyone have any corrections to make? Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'd like to make a motion to accept the December 13, 2022 and the January 10th, 2023 minutes as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye looking. All those, uh, the, the resolution passes unanimously. Um, item number three, informational items. Are there any information items from staff? Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know that our um, boards and committees uh, recruitment is open now. We've got about 12 boards, committees, and commissions in the city. And so we really encourage everyone to apply. If there's, I'm sure there's something that's interesting for everyone. I'm sure folks are particularly interested in the planning commission and sitting here in this room with us as we have our esteemed colleague, Greg Hemer, stepping down at the end of June. So we'll be looking for someone not to take his place but to fill their own role oh, moving forward. Um, so if you know anyone that might find this fun and interesting, please reach out to them. You can find all of the information on the city's website. You just go to the home page and there'll be a jump page from there. And that is, that is open until April 1st, just so everybody knows. Thank you. That's it. Great, and maybe just following on that, I, I think we had developed, uh, our, our city council had developed kind of our roster for planning commission. Where are we at on that? Have we exhausted our roster of well-qualified candidates? And so we are looking to kind of build that back up as, as people transition. Yep, we have indeed. Um, we had a couple of folks apply last time and the um, other candidate was outside of the city. And so for now, we are looking to find some new folks who would be interested in serving, not just for what we know is going to be open, but then in the oft bizarre chance that anyone else were to leave the book, it's good to have somebody to fill the role. Sure, Hemer, those are uh, big shoes for someone else to fill, so. June 30th, nine years, ladies and gentlemen, June 30th. I found out the date. I actually had to contact our city recorder to find that out. Uh, I may be the longest running planning commissioner uh, with, uh, within uh, 35 years to actually be serving, so. Wow. Wow. That's great. Impressive. Thank you. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. That's a special part Painful for you all, good for me. <laughs> No. Um, and uh, 
I'm, I want to say Chair Lowesfeld, but we've switched to titles, but I'm also noticing your term is ending in June. And so um, we'll have to have a conversation about whether or not you plan on continuing to uh, stay on the Planning Commission. Um, well, now that Greg is moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can get out of here at 7.30, so. That's right. You know, yeah. must be easier. Yeah, I should, should probably move us forward. Um, maybe the only other informational item for our remote planning uh, commission colleagues is there's a great um, amount of treats in the room today. So um, you are not only missing out on our joyous in-person uh, festivities, but you're also missing out on the sweets. Um, we'll move on to the next order of business, audience participation. Um, we do not have any members in of audience in the physical room. Do we have any? Um, we have one person online. So this is an opportunity for um, members of the public to comment on items not on the agenda. Does any audience member wish to comment on an item that's on not on tonight's agenda? See no hands raised. See, yeah, no hands raised. Great. Um, we'll move on to item number five, Community Involvement Advisory Committee. At this point of the agenda, the commission will act as the Community Involvement Advisory Committee. Does staff have any uh, updates they'd like to share? Yeah. Um, so back last fall when we went met with the neighborhood associations um, and we identified some things as the commission, uh, the, sorry, Committee, CIAC, um, wanted to move forward this year to try to develop some materials to help folks understand the land use process a little bit more. So we are doing that. We actually have just gotten started. And so we've got a couple of things. We've got the land use training 101 that's really going to look at the development review process and when folks can get involved and how they can get involved and the best way to get involved. So we're working on developing those materials now. What we will probably do is we're going to shoot to go out to all of the neighbor, the NDAs um, at the end of May, early June. Um, so our intention is to visit them so that we don't add one more meeting that they have to come to. So we should be able to do that. Um, also, so there be there's going to kind of be three Three tools of part of that: the land use 101 development review process, the public testimony guidance, and then the kind of this response tool to when folks get an application. So we're going to be working on all three of those concurrently, and we'll see like which pieces are a PowerPoint, and which might be a handout, and all that kind of stuff. So we will get back to you on the progress with that. Um, and then the other request was to um, communicate through the NDA. Um, communicate with the NDAs quarterly regarding an update on development projects. And so what we're going to do is put together a little brief update um, at the end of each quarter and have it put in the um, NDA Friday newsletter so that folks, if folks have questions, they can reach out to us, but just given like a little brief update on all of the big stuff that's going on. Uh, do any members of the CIAC have any items to report? Yeah, not really an item, but I just kind of have a question because Greg and I were talking and I'm still a little confused about this. Um, is it possible to have kind of more of a designated person or persons on a committee and still, because I know that part of the challenge was having like a separate day, a separate meeting, a separate everything. Um, but is it is there potential for, for like a committee that would still be inside of our planning commission meetings here to kind of head up part of that. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying this right. I'm not. I do. What Commissioner Ernst, I believe, is trying <laughs> to get at is, um, is the discussion that we had at the very beginning of this, if we can all remember that, um, was that we said, hey, the CIAC uh, could be much more important than the way that we are attributing it today, uh, meaning that we could have supplemental members that could come in and uh, be a part of the CIAC instead of just being the planning commission. And I think that's what uh, Commissioner Ernst's concern is, is that we can expand this. Now, um, I know as part of our initial conversation, I don't think that um, 
uh, that the way that we run this today should be the way that we see it in the future, and that that there could be a way to involve more residents uh, and more people that are involved in the land use process to be involved in this, whether it's once a month, once a quarter, the amount of work that you guys have been putting forth uh, to engage with the NDAs. Um, but uh, Commissioner Ernst had had raised this point, and uh, did I explain that? Yeah, I, I don't actually have a very well carved out thought on this. I'm just thinking that um, if there is kind of an opening for somebody to volunteer or kind of I don't know if there, it would be possible to do a little bit of a committee inside. So we're still incorporating it into our meetings here, but just I don't have, I think, the full time to like dedicate towards this part of when we when we talk about this. Um, and and I don't feel like it's you know. But I also understand the challenges of creating a whole separate. But there's some bridging with like communication with the NDAs and you know with the community in, in general. So I just I'm kind of just throwing that out there on a broad like, is there a position or two or something that could maybe bridge that gap and, in the future? And and you're talking you're kind of asking the question specifically about the community involvement advisory committee, like yeah, like creating an additional spot or two where right an where NDA they could member even or another community member could fulfill could fill that right so even if they're just not on the planning commission if they come in and they kind of are a liaison or are i don't know i don't know exactly yeah. what i'm saying yet it, but something around those yeah. yeah i mean i imagine we'd probably have to rewrite the ciac bylaws would yes. and run that by council um but that you know if if there was kind of extensive conversations about what the role of the CIAC is yeah. and what the role the planning commission would play. And it was very, there was a lot of conversations about that. So yes, you're correct. We would have to go through what we would think we would want that to be and then have city council talk about it. And I mean, I think an important thing, because I think community involvement, public involvement can be very wide ranging. I do think it's important for us to keep in mind that like the CIAC's focus really is around community involvement around land use specifically. Yeah. Um, so I think if we were to think about bringing other community members in, we just want to make sure that they were really we, clear on that expectation. Like, nope, this isn't the place to talk about. We do have a commissioner that's been the longest I've heard, the longest <laughs> that um, might have some free time coming up. Um, oh, afterwards. You could be like yeah. an, an ex officio so, member. There you go. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's an interesting topic. Maybe staff could think about it a little bit and we could talk about it a little bit more at one of our next meetings. I imagine that uh, an overhaul of the bylaws would I mean, w wouldn't necessarily be a significant issue, but it wouldn't be a minor one either. It feels like it's somewhere in between. There was just yeah, there was a lot of conversations coming out of, originally out of the conversation about what the role of the CIAC yeah. was, and yeah. so it would be a we'd have to revisit all of those conversations again, and I, so that would be. <laughs> That's a good, um, uh, Commissioner Losfeld, I think, I don't know if you're raising your hand and unraising your hand, but we are having, uh, the screens are dancing in here and, um, oh, yeah, it's a technical difficulty on your side. Great. Well, um, I noticed that your hand is up as well. So, um, yeah, that, I was trying to, uh, get your attention. It worked. Hey, um, Chair Chairman, I have a suggestion. I I I hear what you're saying, uh, Commissioner Ernst, but I I'm concerned that extending this to additional members is maybe not not the best approach that requires rewriting of the bylaws. But I think the conversation we have been having around how to better communicate and support, be present, and provide both um, kind of educational opportunities and extend uh, greater um, invitation to our meetings when it concerns certain NDAs. I, I see that as a stronger path forward uh, rather than bringing on new members. I, and this is because I see their involvement in um, our conversations uh, is is 
being difficult, being diff really difficult to engage and get people to consistently show up and then be part of these conversations has been a challenge for us. So my, my sense, my personal sense is that us being more um, active in our outreach and our engagement to those groups is, is going to benefit. I think we're kind of on the same, on the same page. I like that, um, Commissioner Lois felt. Yeah, Justin. I, I have a question. I'm just, just. I'm not sure I understand exactly. I understand the concept of opening it up to, but possibly additional folks. But are you anticipating that this would be a separate committee that then would meet at a different time, or no? Okay, Commissioner Heemner. I, I cannot pronounce last name. Um, at the point where he's leaving the Planning Commission. It, it seems like a kind of a natural fit to me to see if if he could potentially carve out a little space um, to kind of lead that effort um, because I, I feel like I don't give that space enough. And I mean, obviously this is like up to you too, like, um, but I just think even if you didn't want to do it, somebody that did know a lot about the Planning Commission and the community and connections with the NDA could do more of an outreach and work that part of it a little bit more. Okay, I, I guess I'm just, is that a separate committee or is that just a person who's operating independent? So Justin, what happens is, is that we are technically a separate committee no matter how you look at it. Absolutely, but you, and you are purposefully defined as the planning. But, but just like the budget committee, just like what the redevelopment committee should be, uh, there is a body that is already incorporated into it, plus other people added into it, right? Uh, and so that incorporation could actually happen. Our issue is, is that when we first originally discussed it, we went round and round and round and round uh, about what the purpose of the CIAC was. Um, I think we basically settled that it was for goal one uh, purposes. And if it's for goal one purposes, uh, it is to reach out to our land use chairs uh, and to make sure that they are involved in the process and understand the process so that their feedback is not only purposeful, but also valuable back to their residents inside their NDA. So if we can incorporate a few of them into our system, um, that they would make them more knowledgeable, more educated, and more well-equipped to be able to handle these issues. And um, that is, it's a long conversation. It's, it's, it's a dream kind of conversation. Right. Uh, but I think if we kind of maybe set the tone a little bit, I love what uh, the planning department already has, right? And, and I, will, I will give you this uh, because uh, I live in parables. Zach Perry and Mike Parker have done a huge, excellent job by working with Niles, who is in pre-application stage for this 88 unit, well, we're not even really sure what the units are. Could be 80, could be whatever it is. Um, complex that is what we call the ravioli, not ravioli, Rivoli farm, uh, which is just this huge lot that sits in Linwood. And they have gone to the NDA and they said, look, if they work within the dimensions of what the city has laid out, there's nothing we can really do, right? Because if they meet the standards, then there's nothing they can do. If they go for a variance, then there's something that we can do, right? That we can argue it. But what we realize is, is that if we talk with Niles ahead of time about our concerns, and if we understand the rules ourselves, because Niles understands the rules, and as long as we understand the rules, then we can report back correctly to the NDA to give the concerns that we can give. And um, I think that's what the importance of the CIAC is, not only education, um, but to um, allow the land use chairs an opportunity 
to be able to express their concerns about the rules, right, so that we can involve that into our planning commission discussions. Does that make sense? I think that makes a lot of sense. I think I would also, though, like to note for ourselves, you know, there's a space in the CIAC portion of all of our meetings for uh, community member involvement. Um, and that's something that hasn't happened really to date. Um, and so I just would want to make sure that we're like solving a problem people want us to solve. And, you know, if, if we had NDA land use chairs showing up every meeting saying, here's the things you guys need to work on, I feel like, um, I feel like it might be, the, the conversation might have a little bit more merit to it. Not, not to suggest we can't always do better, and I think that's why we're talking with staff about things like going out to community and better educating on that. But I think I'd want us to just, I, I don't think I personally am opposed to thinking about membership, although I don't know honestly if that's our choice or if that's council's choice um so that might be a thing for us to cl clarify ourselves um but i do think it's an interesting point and i think ever since we've kind of been in this role or hand had these responsibilities handed to us we've kind of asked ourselves the question of so what wh why are we doing this and and how can we do a better job in making sure community feels engaged and I do think some of the suggestions that have been made over time are helping with that. And I do think that the materials that we're getting ready to do will help with that. So I think these yeah. conversations are valuable and we're reacting to them and we're gonna yeah. go out to the community and help. Yeah. Like when last year we had the conversations, we rearranged the website to make it easier yeah. to understand. We developed, we re-updated the Land Use 101 training. So these, yeah. they, they are impactful. And I think if we continue to have this dialogue and continue to kind of create this information out to folks that that does get at what you're trying to accomplish. But the pre-application thing that you guys did was awesome. I mean, it actually, it works. I've seen it work. I've been, like I said, I go to a lot of NDA meetings for a lot of different reasons. And that pre-application, they the, the land use chairs actually pay attention to it. You guys have done an excellent job. I guess the question is, is that have we actually gone out to the land use chairs and said, hey, you're allowed to be a part of this meeting? Of which meeting? I, I think we might have, you know, in terms of, you know, when we invited uh, uh, the neighborhood leaders and land use chairs to participate in one of our meetings recently. And, you know, I believe uh, we had, um, now, uh, Councillor Stavenjord participate as well as another uh, another community member. So I think that um, opportunity has been out there. Could we be more explicit in going out? Probably, and maybe that's a piece of feedback that um, that hopefully staff could share with with members of um, of the various NDAs around town. Sure, we can do that. Uh, I, yeah, I was going to thanks, uh, Commissioner Losfeld. Maybe I'll hand it to you for the last comment on this topic before I moving us, one, or two more yeah. comments before moving us forward. Thanks, Chair Sherman. I'm looking forward to moving on. Um, I just wanted to mention, I think, uh, Commissioner Ernst, didn't you have um, some special uh, kind of feedback or suggestions last time we were talking about um, the 101 training and how to leverage either your own network through Milwaukee Chit Chat or how to even just tweak, tweak what we were offering to get a broader cast uh, from the community? Actually, your comments. Yeah. Well, she just led me right into that. Um, so I am building a website called Zip in a Mile, and that is a community calendar and resource directory. And so the city meetings will be on there. Um, and I can also add, right now it just says planning commission, but now that I'm thinking about it, we can add the community outreach portion of that as well. Um, so that's a website called Zip in a Mile, and it's just gonna, it's a cal community calendar active right now. And then we're building the resource directory that will have listings for all of our local government organizations. And I do remember, um, Commissioner Art, that you were talking about wanting to have some information that you could share with people about kind of what the role of the Planning Commission is and what it isn't. That is what we were gonna develop, okay. these things. And we're gonna give you something, a little, you asked for like a small slide deck that might kind yeah, of explain exactly. that. So that's something that we're hoping to extrapolate once we get the big picture, there could be something that might be useful for to you that you could post. Okay. 
we just have to make sure that staff can free up from some of these uh, climate friendly equitable communities right. and code <laughs> cleanup and those things so folks can focus on some of that um, well, thanks all for the conversation. I do also want to just make sure there's an opportunity for any public comment as part of our uh, community involvement advisory committee portion of the meeting. I, I'm assuming we still maybe have one person tuning in digitally. If they would like to um, share any comments, they could use raise their hand. Yes. Oh, great. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? We can. Great. Oh, great. Uh, before, uh, thanks for joining us. Before you testify, could you please state your name and city of residence for the record? Uh, this is Charles Bird. I reside in the city of uh, Milwaukee. I'm in uh, Island Station neighborhood, currently the chair of Island Station neighborhood on River Road. That's where I am. And I've been listening to the conversation and I too have uh, shared the, the concern or the interest of, of more communication with uh, the neighborhoods. I think it's great that you're going to reach out to the neighborhood through the NDAs. I think that's fantastic. We do have a very, uh, a very, a great uh, land use chair in our own neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I guess my question, it begs the question of why is the CIC not made up of land use chairs and go with that and see if that works out. That's a question or a comment or feedback. And I would like to talk about the the um, um, the next item on the agenda, but it's on the agenda, so you haven't asked for any comments on that that as yet. Great, thanks. Well, thanks, Charles. We'll hold your comment on on that until the, the next item. You know, I think in terms of the composition of the community involvement advisory committee, as we were just talking about, you know, I think um, when the state requirement was kind of made clearer on this, I think city council saw the planning commission as the the embodiment of of this for now. And you know that doesn't mean we uh, the planning commission always needs to be the sole body comprised of that. I think as Commissioner Hemer and Commissioner Ert were just talking about, you know, perhaps we might want to um, think about expanding or redefining what membership looks like. So I appreciate you kind of echoing that comment. I think staff have heard it and uh, we can think more about it as we kind of move forward. And that might be some feedback that you also want to share with Mayor Beatty and um, other, other city councilors. Okay, I will. Great. Um, well, if there's no other public comment as part of the CIAC, I'd like to move us forward to um, item, uh, item six, which is our hearing items. Um, 6.1 is a type five application for a package of climate friendly equitable communities code amendments. Um, the type five application for climate friendly equitable communities code amendments is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is for the commission's consideration of application number ZA-2022-005. If you are here to testify, please remember to confine your remarks to the applicable and relevant criteria and to try and avoid repetition and information that isn't relevant. Planning Commission will make a recommendation to City Council regarding whether the proposal conforms with all of the city's applicable criteria. I'd now like to ask staff to cite the zoning ordinance section or sections where the criteria can be found. <clears throat> The um, relevant sections are uh, section 19902, amendments to maps and ordinances, and section 19-1008, type five review. Great. Um, do any members of the Planning Commission uh, wish to abstain from this hearing? No. No. Hearing none. Uh, does any Hearing. member of the Planning Commission Oh, thanks, uh, Commissioner Losfeld. Uh, Chair, on my end, I still see that Charles is part of the panel. I think staff will, or I, are looking at it. Um, I imagine they'll probably get some of that fixed while we move into presentation. And I just go. got a thumbs up, which probably means things changed on your end as well. Yep. 
Thanks. Thanks, thanks Commissioner Losfeld. Uh, does any member of the commission wish to declare an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. 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 Hearing no. none, um, well, let's please uh, proceed to the staff report. All right. In the meantime, we'll continue to circulate suites. <laughs> Okay, uh, can those on Zoom see the presentation? Okay, great. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, for the record, uh, this is Ryan Dyer, assistant planner. Um, the first hearing tonight, as you mentioned, is for land use file number ZA 2022-005. The proposal would amend the Milwaukee Municipal Code to comply with recent changes to state uh, administrative rules that govern how jurisdictions regulate off-street parking. These changes were made through the climate-friendly and equitable communities rulemaking process. Uh, to briefly recap uh, the executive administrative history on this, uh, in March of 2020, Governor Brown issued Executive Order 2004. Uh, in response, uh, the Department of Land Conservation and Development initiated the Climate Friendly Equitable Communities Rulemaking. And that process amended three divisions of Chapter 660 of the Oregon Administrative Rules, Division 8, which is related to housing, Division 12, related to transportation, and Division 44, which sets greenhouse gas reduction targets for metropolitan areas in the state. Um, the focus of tonight is the changes uh, for Division 12, uh, transportation. So uh, that goal, or those changes, had the goal of reducing transportation-related greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, they, it changed how jurisdictions update their transportation system plans. And as we've discussed previously, it made changes to how jurisdictions regulate off-street parking. Um, most of these rules will apply as communities update their transportation system plans. However, as you know, some of the rules, the parking rules take effect sooner. Some are already in effect and uh, others must be adopted by June 30th of 2023. So when it comes to parking, communities basically have two options here. This is, this is all review, nothing new, um, but just wanted to uh, cover it again for those um, who haven't been following along. Communities can either option A, they can remove uh, vehicle off-street vehicle parking mandates citywide and adopt a few changes, uh, standards uh, to their development codes that would apply when builders choose to provide parking. Uh, in addition to that, there are EV conduit requirements in the rules. Those have been, uh, were handled through a different um, code amendment process. Um, and then finally, there are some off-street um, parking maximums for communities in the metro area, the Portland metro area that are over 25,000 in population. So those do not apply to Milwaukee. Uh, so that's option A. Option B, uh, if communities choose to retain some parking mandates, they can do so. However, the, the rules basically limit where communities can apply those mandates by geography and by land use types. Communities have to adopt a more complex uh, sort of parking management um, program instead of regulations if they choose to keep some parking mandates. So that's option B. Looking, um, so the result of implementing uh, one of those options in, um, or one of those rules in option B, uh, which is rule 440, uh, parking near frequent transit, uh, disallows jurisdictions from requiring parking within one half mile of a frequent bus routes and within three quarters mile of a rail transit stop. Uh, staff did some analysis and that equates to roughly 80% of the city as shown on this map. Um, within that area, as I said, uh, 
the city could continue to mandate off street parking as provided. Um, however, there are a lot of carve outs in the rules that limit uh, which land uses the city could apply it to. Um, and uh, there are some additional sort of geographic limitations as well. So we first brought this analysis of the rulemaking and the implications for Milwaukee to city council in August of 2022. They provided direction uh, to remove parking mandates citywide rather than uh, adopt option B, the more complex set of regulations. Uh, we then brought that recommendation to this body in September and held two work sessions, one in November and then one in January. Um, although the city is proposing these amendments in response to the new administrative rules, there is considerable alignment between these changes uh, and adopted goals and policies, uh, notably the city's climate action plan, which was adopted in 2017, and also the comprehensive plan uh, adopted in 2020. Uh, the findings in support of approval highlight um, aligned policies in three different sections of the comprehensive plan. Uh, section six, which is related to climate change and energy. Section seven, related to housing. And section eight, related to urban design and land use. In summary then, the code amendments in attachment one of the staff report uh, do the following. They remove vehicle parking requirements citywide, um, off-street vehicle parking requirements. They remove references to off-street required parking. They adopt some new standards for large parking lots, those over a quarter acre in size, um, surface parking lots. Uh, there are some minor non-substantive language changes um, to uh, promote language consistency within Title 19. So that's uh, changing things like uh, language from single family to single detached dwellings. And then finally, uh, there were some changes made to 19609, uh, which is the bicycle parking chapter of the code. Uh, those were non-substantive as well, um, and were basically just uh, added to ensure that a new commercial conditional uses, community service uses, industrial uses provided some vehicle parking or bicycle parking uh, because previously bicycle parking requirements were tied um, to vehicle parking requirements. I do want to note one change um, or one area of change within the code from our discussion in um, January of this uh, after conversing a little bit more with um, the uh, Department of Land Conservation and Development about the rules that we had put forward. Um, they noted that uh, there was um, one section related to uh, new, uh, uh, the standards that we had put forward for new large parking lots, surface parking lots. Um, so we ha went back, made some revisions uh, to ensure consistency. Uh, those included things like the department wanted us to pay special attention to um, walkways within those new large parking lots. So making sure that at areas where um, crosswalks were um, intersecting with driveways and drive aisles, that those were um, demarcated in such a way uh, to stand out. So paint alone is not sufficient. The rules require um, builders to use distinctive materials or for those crosswalks to be raised to ensure pedestrian safety. In addition, um, there are requirements that uh, large parking lots are connected uh, to pedestrian facilities on the streets. Um, that has to be, uh, that is a requirement that the our code already contained. However, there's um, a stipulation that that has to be a raised curb separating uh, the large parking lot from the uh, street pedestrian facility. Um, there's also an inch or a requirement that um, the longest facade of a building must contain a pedestrian uh, facility and that there has to be a zero foot setback between that pedestrian facility and the longest facade of the building and that that longest facade must contain a main entrance. So I just wanted to note those because those were not um, requirements that were in uh, the code amendments that we had brought to you in, in January. But um, yeah, after reviewing those changes, uh, the 
department um, said that what we would, had done was consistent with the rules. Um, Yeah, so as noted in the findings, notice of the proposed amendments was provided consistent with the requirements in section 19, 1008. Uh, we provided 35 day notice to Metro and to the state, um, and we provided 30 day, that was on January 10th, and then uh, 30 day notice was provided to the public uh, on January 13th. Um, we received one comment from Lake Road NDA member Teresa Bresaw asking some clarifying questions about what was put forward um, and, and uh, Teresa expressed some uh, skepticism about the changes. Um, and you have basically four decision options here. Uh, staff's recommendation is to recommend that the council approve the proposed amendments per the recommended findings in support of approval. You also have the option to recommend the council approve the proposed amendments with some revisions, including modifications to the recommended findings in support of approval. Those modifications would need to be read into the record. And then you could recommend that council deny the proposed amendments or that the uh, hearing be continued. And I am available for questions. Thanks so much. I um, want to open it up to any clarifying questions from the Planning Commission for staff. And I think I'll start with our um, digital colleagues um, if they have any questions. No? Questions from colleagues in the room? Commissioner Hamer? We can't actually deny the application because it's state law, correct? The city must take action by June 30th of this year. Yeah, correct. In accordance of the rules that have been written. Yes. I think maybe one of my clarifying questions um, it is around going back to kind of 80% coverage of the city, and I know you have that slide. And that is based off of um, existing frequent service, uh, transit frequent service, correct? Correct. Yeah. It might be worth noting, and of course, the, uh, their planning is not complete yet, but TriMet is updating its service planning right now. It has actually proposed frequent service down Linwood and Harmony, which would essentially eliminate that other 20% if, if their proposal moves forward. So just want to note that for the record. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Any other uh, clarifying questions from, yes, uh, Commissioner Losfeld? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Sherman. I, I'm just, in reviewing the packet ag again here, it, do we have record of the individual from Lake Road? And the the critic criticism of of the suggested changes is that I'm not seeing it. I'm not sure that you do. Um, it was an email exchange, and yeah, I can. Apologies for that. I will send that out to everybody on planning commission. Okay, I want to make sure that gets recorded as part of this record. Um, well. In, in the meantime, is it reasonable to ask that you somehow, can you summarize the points of concern? I can from memory, I will do my best. Um, I think the points of concern, I, like I said, there, there were, it was, I would, in my memory, I would primarily characterize it as um, just seeking clarification about what the rules actually required um, but in addition to that, there was some commentary interspersed, um, basically stating skepticism or that it was, I think, wishful thinking that removing parking mandates would help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And I think in addition to that, there was a concern that basically that the city should not um, extend the uh, removal of off-street parking requirements to the rest of the city uh, for something that was untested. Those, those were basically 
yeah, a, a, a sense that this would not work. And because we do not think that it will work, um, we should not be extending this to the rest of the city using the discretion that we do have. Thank you, Ryan. Um, Chair, I have, I have concern about not having that as part of our documents, um, but yet providing recommendations on moving forward. Yeah, perhaps, um, you know, we do, I think, next move into testimony and perhaps Ryan can dig that email chain up and forward it on to the Planning Commission. I think uh, everyone in the room is sitting in front of their own personal computer and should be able to receive that. And I imagine both of you are able to receive that as well. And then I think staff could also probably... Uh, make sure that the material, the digital materials are updated to be, to include that in the, in the package. If it helps with timing, I do have a, a question specific to. Sure. Yeah. No, that'd be great. Design. Yeah. Um, and maybe this is for, um, uh, Vera, um, as Ryan was looking. Um, the, can you describe, uh, just help me understand for clarification, the zero foot setback along the, the building, it, does that provide, is that, maybe, maybe just describe what that would look like for a uh, and pedestrian facility. Sure, um, and I'll have Ryan jump in on that because that is something that the LCD staff um, and what uh, the um, guidelines talk about um, with the CFEC recommendations and we talked about that internally as staff as well um, the what they want to see um, and we were sort of thinking about it you know even in our like international way business parks like trying to figure out we kept trying to apply the new rules to existing development because we're trying to picture what what they what they mean and um, and the best that we could suss out was that um, the pedestrian facility so there's a sidewalk sort of adjacent to the building that what they want to see is the building itself actually up against that sidewalk so it's not set back we actually had some questions about that we thought well yeah. that's generally where landscaping goes mm -hmm. or you know yeah. something like that um and it sounded to me like uh dlcd staff you know um, would be open to having conversations i guess because it was more of a guideline or a recommendation um but the idea being that the pedestrian facility is close is is adjacent to or um, is up close to the building. So it's not the front yard setback from the right of way. It's that the building itself is set right up against whatever pedestrian facility is adjacent to the building. Um, so to be frank, we were sort of, we were, like I said, thinking about, but that's, we put landscape, landscape there. That yeah. seems mm -hmm. like an okay idea too. Um, and it sounded like, I don't know that, um, and I, I would ask Ryan when he has a second to sort of characterize what that, guidance was um, from DLCD staff, um, but that that's their recommendation is, is that buildings are adjacent to the pedestrian facilities. So kind of wherever that is. Maybe on a slightly alternate topic, but I think it's always an important one to, to remind ourselves as well as everyone else on. The, Vera, the, the city removing minimum parking requirements, does that stop a developer from building parking on their own? It does not, and that's a great clarification, um, Chair. It's, there are maximums, certainly, um, parking that are established within the section, but um, we don't prohibit parking. Um, we just create a maximum of, you know, a ceiling for the number of parking spaces. Um, but no, developers or, you know, or folks that are um, putting together a site can in fact build parking up to the maximum, yes. And so what this effectively does is means the city is no longer dictating that a developer build a minimum number of parking Correct. spots. They can still choose to build parking spots up to the maximum. That's right. Great. That's exactly right. Thanks. And, and it, I, I might, on that note, when we were having all of the conversations about middle housing as well, it was, you know, a similar conversation that um, at that time, you know, we weren't, we didn't require a, a minimum parking for middle housing as well, um, but that didn't mean that developers couldn't build it. It's, and this, the CFAC is sort of coming on the heels of that. It's a very similar 
notion acceptance citywide. Yeah, I think it's just important uh, item to clarify for members of the public who might miss over that right. that piece of nuance there. We can't require it, but they can. They build can it. still build it. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, Ryan, Laura, are we ready to move on? Maybe. I do have a copy of the email okay. in your inbox, and it wasn't submitted as part of the public hearing. It happened before the public hearing, oh, so we didn't realize that it, it was an official comment. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for Correct. no. Thanks for clarifying that for the record, and I'm glad we all have it now. And uh, anything else, Ryan? The only thing I would say about just following up on the conversation you were just having is that I did talk with um, DLC about the zero foot setback requirement. It does sound like. There are a number of um, rules that LCDC is going to be taking another look at, um, and the provisions in 405, including this zero foot setback, I think are one of them. And so there could be changes um, coming in the future uh, to the either amendments to the rules themselves or um, amendments to the guidance that DLCD is providing on the rules. Yeah, and um, I think all of us planning commissioners have received the um, testimony before testimony was a was a thing um, from uh, Ms. Teresa Brisa um, from Lake Road NDA. Um, so I appreciate that, and we have that now. Um, want to um, move us to the. Uh, public testimony portion of our hearing. Do we have anyone who wishes to testify on the application? If so, could they um, raise their digital hand and then uh, please state their name and city of residence for the record? Thank you, commissioners. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to speak. Um, I don't have very many comments. It won't take long. I believe that this is moving Milwaukee, as, as they say, the euphemism goes in the wrong direction. Sorry, sir, we're having a hard time understanding you. There's some background noise or something. So yeah, it just showed up. For, it, it's brand new. Give us mo just a moment. It's Thank been you. coming and going since I've been listening to it, and it's not this loud, though. The other commissioners experiencing yeah, that more. same thing. You know, we just heard it in the room for the first time. If you can hear me, I'll continue. Yeah, we because, can. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I'm not going to go out on a limb here, but I'm predicting that in the future, in a few decades, we'll all be driving electric cars. So the actual car driving as part of a, of a, of a climate action it's going to be neutralized. So I, I want to just say that it's it's kind of we'll be looking back at this if we start re eliminating parking, off street parking, and what I believe will happen is that people will still have cars, people will still have vehicles, probably more than one, and if they have teenagers, they'll have more than two. People will have cars, and they will want to park them somewhere in the city. And if the new development, um, um, dense development, which I feel we're looking at here as, uh, as a possibility in places because of these new rules where you have zero setback from the sidewalk and um, no parking, off street parking, then it's going to be more dense development. Gonna have a lot of cars finding, trying to find spots in the neighborhood. You've probably heard this before, but I think this is just moving Milwaukee in a direction that is just the wrong direction. I don't know if this, if the state is really going to be in charge of creating these kind of cities all across the state, but taking the time to um, to testify, um, is there any staff response to um, to testimony? No. Any any questions from the commissioner or from the commission? No. Great. Um, if not, I will close the public por uh, testimony portion of the hearing. Uh, the public testimony portion of the hearing on the Climate Friendly Equitable Communities Code Amendments on file ZA-2002, sorry, let me correct that, ZA-2022-005 is now closed. Uh, is the commission ready for discussion? Yeah. Um, anybody like to open? I'll go. Uh, Mr. Bird, 
and Miss Teresa are absolutely correct uh, in their assumption. Um, so this is the way I look at it. So I used to live downtown. I talk in parables. So I used to live downtown, right? Right by uh, on um, 12th and Burnside. So um, the stadium was kind of across the street. And uh, when there was a game, I'd have to drive around the block six, seven, eight times to find a parking spot. Now, if I had a spot that I could just go to, I would have to drive around the block eight, nine, ten, ten, eight, nine, or ten times. So um, there's some counterintuitive in this, uh, in this. And right, if we believe that we're all going to go electric or flying cars or whatever it is, um, that uh, spacing is required. But with all that being said, our state legislators, the people that we vote for, uh, have decided that this is a perfect way to handle the entire state, no matter your municipality. <clears throat> so we don't get local choice. Uh, we are stuck with state mandates. And since we're stuck with state mandates, I say that I have to vote yes for it. Mm. Thanks, Commissioner Hamer. Appreciate uh, the parable. I, I think I'll note that if, uh, in my personal opinion, we'd be so lucky as to have Providence Park relocate into Milwaukee, Oregon. I just don't think that'll be the likelihood anytime soon. Um, I also think it's worth noting that, you know, we, we as in uh, more of an urban community, um, uh, did have some choice. We had two paths we could choose to go down and both paths would probably get us to the same result and one would be um, very administratively burdensome and I think we chose the easier of those two paths so we can have our staff who are supported by our tax dollars working on more important things than trying to find loopholes that don't really exist. So um, I'm excited to move this forward. I uh, appreciate all the work that staff has done on it. I don't know if any other commissioners have anything they'd like to say. I have a quick comment. Um, so just regarding the future and what that will look like, autonomous vehicles will be a thing. And ev even if we do not have individual autonomous vehicles, which we likely will, um, we can push a button and that autonomous vehicle would not be driving around looking for a parking spot. It would go a mile or two away to a very tall parking garage that would then insert itself into just a slot that cars are stacked on top of each other. Then you push a button and that car will come back and pick you up. Not only that, that will be for individual autonomous vehicles, but also ride share autonomous vehicles will be much more prevalent. And um, when when we go in that direction, um, also AI will be able to, to reduce traffic patterns by rerouting cars, so traffic jams will no longer be a thing. So parking spaces and parking lots as we know them in the semi-distant future will not, we won't have them, they won't exist. Hey, at some point we'll have My to... Um encourage my technologist uh, commissioner or, and uh, perhaps my Luddite commissioner Hamer <laughs> to place a hefty wager, maybe with a date. It's already the reality uh, right a, now. Uh, put a year on it where, where you can envision our different realities. All, all I want to say is this to my fellow commissioner <laughs> Ernst. Right now. As they outlaw parking lots and as they outlaw parking garages, your cars don't have a place to go. I'm gonna, uh, I'll let you both uh, take this take this conversation up after, or continue the conversation after the meeting. Um, Vice Chair Freeman, uh, Commissioner Losfeld, any, any discussion from either of you? Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I support this moving forward and see it being the future. I don't have any question or concern about that. And I do believe that there is broad spread um, support within the community, though it does have its challenges. Uh, Chair, I would just say that I think the changes in the, uh, are consistent with uh, what's required by the state. Um, I don't think anyone can foretell the future, uh, so that's hard to say. Um, but I, I think these, uh, what the staff has put together is consistent with what's required, and I appreciate the work. Great. Commissioner Carpenter? I do want to say, I think this, uh, direction gives uh, the development community a lot more flexibility, which um, 
when we're looking at um, attainable housing, affordable housing, um, more flexibility is good. And uh, the development community still works within a marketplace. And if uh, units aren't selling because there's no parking, they're gonna change how they do it. And as long as they have the flexibility to continue to provide parking on site, off street, they're gonna continue to do that uh, within the maximum. So I don't have any problem with this. I see this is a, a good direction, um, whether or not it is uh, pie in the sky for reaching uh, greenhouse gas emission goals. Uh, it's maybe more closely aligned with, with other visions with, with housing. But uh, again, I, I still see this as a positive direction. I think that's a very practical perspective, Commissioner Carpenter. If there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Just a quick one. What I was talking about. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the discussion. Any 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 motions out there? You're holding it? Yeah. I, oh. Okay. I think we're ready to vote. I'd like to make a motion to accept. ZA 2022-005, forwarding it to City Council uh, and finding support of approval found in attachment one. We have a motion, is it seconded? Second. Motion's been seconded, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 There are no nays, the motion passes unanimously. Um, the decision is a recommendation to the Milwaukee City Council, which will make the final decision after a public hearing. Please see planning staff for details concerning the City Council hearing date and process. Next up is item 6.2, our code fix housekeeping code amendments. The type five application for a package of our housekeeping code amendments is called to order. Um, the purpose of this hearing is for the commission's consideration of application number ZA-2023-001 code fix amendments. I'd like to ask staff to cite the zoning ordinance sections where the criteria can be found. Or section 19.902, amendments to maps and ordinances, and section 19.1008, type 5 review. Great. Um, all testimony and evidence must be directed towards the applicable substantive criteria. If anyone's here to testify, please remember to confine your remarks to the application and the relevant criteria and avoid repetition. The Planning Commission will make a recommendation to Milwaukee City Council whether the proposal conforms with all of the city's applicable criteria. Like we just um, uh, cited the zoning uh, uh, ordinance section, so we don't need to do that twice. Um, does any member of the commission wish to abstain from the hearing? No. No? No. No. Hearing none. No. Uh, does any member of the commission wish to declare an actual or a potential conflict of interest? No. 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 And hearing none. Um, Vera, could you give us the staff report? Oh, thank thank you. you. Evening, everyone. Uh, see if I can... Hoping I can see. Good evening, everyone. Vera Coley, Senior Planner, to present the um, housekeeping code amendment. All right. Um, again, um, housekeeping code amendments or housekeeping is what we like to call them. They're minor code fixes, uh, generally clarifications, minor changes, um, and certainly not intended to affect the meaning um, or intent of existing regulations um, and are not intended to be a change in policy. This is the general process for a code fix um, amendments um, like this. Staff presented these proposed amendments on January 10th in a work session uh, where some recommendations were made um, by the Planning Commission. I will review the code package and I'll highlight those changes that we've made based on the feedback that we received. Um, and you can see that we are slated to be at City Council on March 7th for a work session and then April 18th. For recommended, um, rightfully so. Um, by the commission um, that we uh, 
make some amendments to the chain to the zoning map so that we would have consistency in naming of our zones. Um, so we are proposing to change the HDR or the high density residential zone to RHD so it's consistent with the RMD uh, zone. Um, the we um, are proposing to make some amendments to Title 17 in the Land Division Code so that we can add the city engineer and the community development director to the list of staff authorized to set bond amounts for development. Um, currently, it's just the public works director um, listed and the city engineers who typically would do that, but we think it's important to have um, both the city engineer and the community development director in that list um, so that we have some additional folks that are authorized to set those bond amounts. We are proposing some changes to some definitions um, so that we are consistent with state law um, as well as consistent, internal consistency with other sections of the code. Um, revising the definition of family child care home so it's consistent with state law. That's um, State House Bill 3109 uh, made those changes. Revising the definition of major pruning so that it matches the definition in the tree code, 16.32. Um, um, we're proposing to revise the definition of structure to clarify that storage shed, containers, sheds, and carports are considered structures. Um, this allows the minimum setbacks to be applied so that we can make sure that we were able to um, be consistent across um, certain proposals that we are seeing. Um, and we are proposing to delete the definition of primary entrance because the code already includes building entrance um, within there and we didn't want to have any confusion between um, with the terminology um, update um, this was brought up during the work session um, staff confirmed we went through the code to make sure that deleting primary entrance would not create conflict with other code sections and it does not so there is internal consistency um, even if we remove that term uh, we are proposing um, to amend the language within the lot coverage section um, within the high density and the moderate density um, zones. Um, it's an issue because the lot coverage bonus doesn't include accessory structures, um, which are also part of a residential property um, and are consistent with the intent of the bonus. So what the, um, what the rewrite does um, is to allow that 10% percent bonus um, for lot coverage to increase even if even with the building of an accessory structure because otherwise it ends up being this weird timing thing to that where you end up with the accessory structure anyway so this makes it easier for staff to interpret the code but it makes it easier for the homeowner to be able to build what they want to and need to build um, on their residential property um, some changes um, in the NMIA um, including um, with a because of a code interpretation um, that uh, that was approved in the end of last year um, regarding e-commerce businesses um, and allowing those as part of the wholesale and warehousing um, um, section in the in the table of, of allowed uses uh, based on feedback from the commission at the work session we've revised the proposed definition um, to direct to direct to consumers via e-commerce such as fulfillment centers I think that term was something that was that's something that is generally used so we've included that with, included that within the definition in that um, in the table we are clarifying or we are also proposing to revise the key streets graphic so that it matches the words in the code. Somehow the wrong graphic got put into the code so we want those to match. Um, clarifying the list of exemptions to comply with goal 15 um, for the types of um, activities that are permitted in the Willamette Greenway. Um, and we are um, proposing some clarifications um, in the accessory structure section, 19.502, um, exempting retaining walls um, from being accessory structures so that they um, so that they're not subject to those setbacks, and adding the street side yard to the table. So again, these are tweaks and fixes that we keep coming up against. So we come here every once in a while <laughs> and go through this list um, of things. Um, the uh, amendments that we're proposing to 19505, if you looked at the underlying strikeout code, it looks like we've added a whole bunch of stuff, but um, we've completely reorganized the section without changing the actual language itself. Um, but what we've done is rather than sort of have everybody go to one section um, for all the different um, building design standards, including cottage clusters and townhouses, 
we're using those building design standards, we're copying them and then adding them to each of those other sections. Um, because otherwise folks um, that were proposing townhouses or cottage clusters were going to two different sections of code. Um, and once we got that into practice, we're like, this, this doesn't work very well. We need everybody to go to, if you're building a cottage cluster, you're going to that section, period. You're not going anywhere else. So again, there isn't any new language ex it's except for some tweaks to make sure that we're complying with state law for um, expansion. If you're turning a single family home or single a detached dwelling into a duplex internally, um, we cannot require um, design review for that. That's in the state law. So we made that very clear in the code. But other than that, we haven't changed um, the intent or the certainly any of the policy um, standards for those standards. So sorry, it looks like we did a lot, um, but it really, we didn't really do that much. <laughs> Um, and then finally, we've made some tweaks to the Measure 56 notice section in the Type 3 review to um, clarify that Measure 56 notice is not required for an owner-initiated MAP amendment. Um, we've added a procedure for a notice of decision um, requirement in appeals. We've been doing that, but it's actually not in the code, so we've put that in there. Um, and we've clarified, um, based on um, a city attorney um, opinion, that annexations are not subject to the 120 day rule because they're a completely different kind of land use review. So that concludes, and so that covers all of the different um, comments that um, planning commission made to um, during the work session. Um, so staff um, recommends that planning commission recommend that council approve the package of code amendments, but we're certainly happy to answer any questions or make any changes um, that, you, that you see fit. Thanks very much. Are there any uh, clarifying questions for staff from the commission? See none in Zoom land, none in real life land. Um, have we received any correspondence on the matter other than those items included in the meeting packet? Not a word, no. Everybody's eating Valentine's Day candy. Um, no. Do we have anyone who wishes to testify on the application? If so, would they please state their name and city of residence for the record? No, Mr. Bird has exited Mr. the meeting. Mr. Bird has left. Great. He had some chocolate, I think, to That's right. well. <laughs> um, those, those chocolate mints are really good. Um, do... Um, does any member of the Planning Commission have questions for testimony that's not occurring, which is not the case. So I will close the public testimony portion of the hearing on the code fix amendments for file ZA-2023-001. Is the commission ready for discussion? Yes. This is probably less exciting than our previous. I want to talk uh, about flying package. cars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not flying, and it is a reality flying. right now, everything that I said. Uh, <laughs> um, and it is, both of you are true. <laughs> both things are true. Um, I don't have any, I don't have any discussion on the items. I'm, I'm ready to move forward. Is anyone else, everyone else? Yes. Same. Same. We might be able to make uh, uh, Commissioner Losfeld happy and get out of here before eight o'clock. Um, <laughs> yes, Chair Losfeld, I see your hands up. Hey, uh, just want to <laughs> love that um, staff recommends that we recommend um, approval on this one and I want to I want to give this my full support. Moving it forward makes a lot of sense and clarifies uh, code. I was also interested to learn um, what you just closed on there, Vera, which is uh, related to the um, that final piece that you noted that uh, land use uh, review was different and didn't and therefore didn't require the 120 day rule. That was new to me, so I was glad to learn about that. You're, you're welcome. The annexation. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. If there's uh, no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to pass on ZA2023-001 and uh, recommend to City Council uh, an adoption of, propo on, of 
of the proposed ordinance and recommended findings in support of approval found in attachment one. Second. I second. Great. The motion to approve application number ZA-2023-001 code fix amendments has been seconded. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the motion passes unanimously. This decision is a recommendation to the city council, which will make the final decision after a public hearing. Please see planning staff for details concerning Milwaukee City Council hearing date and process. Item 7.0, Planning Department, Planning Commission, other business. Do commissioners have any other items for discussion? I just wanna remind everybody uh, sitting here at the pulpit and at home, uh, that give your loved one, your partner, or somebody that you know a special gift this Valentine's Day. Nominate them for Volunteer of the Year, which closes on February 15th. So you can nominate yourself if you want, uh, but if you know somebody that has worked extra hard for the city this year, please send it on in. Uh, discussion is in the middle of March. Uh, voting is in uh, April. So give the gift of a lifetime, nominate somebody for volunteer of the year. Great. I thought for a moment you might be um, encouraging us to give the gifts of membership to the Milwaukee Museum, which is um, the world famous museum dedicated to Milwaukee, Oregon. The only museum. The, the only world's museum. largest museum. The world's largest museum <laughs> dedicated to Milwaukee, Oregon. That's but we'll have, to, we'll have to save that for another, oh, yeah, well, another planning commission I, meeting. I would never mix my city business with my volunteer <laughs> business. <laughs> your volunteer business with your volunteer business. Um, great. Any other uh, updates or items for discussion? No. No. Uh, let's move on to 8.0 forecast for future meetings. Uh, yeah, so February 28th. We don't have any hearing items that night, but we do have two work session items. Vera is going to be back with another round of code updates. I think she's calling them housekeeping plus. But they're different tiers, they, right? They might have an impact on policy. You just know, a, the, a little, the, okay. We're going to add fences in around... Uh, uh, vacation rentals? And that, not unless you, not unless the planning commission recommends it. Beautiful. Got something to work on. <laughs> then we're also going to have Adam Moore here, who's been working on the parks development with Balfour and Scott Park and kind of um, just give you all an update of where they are in the process because then eventually he's going to be coming here for a land use review That's for right. a CSU and um, process. So he's just going to tell you how things have been going. Does that include uh, Mountain Bra no, Mountain Bray is not the right, the one over there in Lake Road? Wasn't that one Bonnie, part of Bonnie it? Bray. Bonnie Bray, does that include Bonnie that Bray, one? Bonnie Bray, no. Uh. Ball four. Bowman Bray. Bowman Bray. Bowman Bray. Bowman Bray. Bray. Yes. Bowman Bray is Sorry, one of the like three parts. Yeah, yes. 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 Sorry about that. Bowman Bray. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. You I are correct. couldn't remember the name myself. Yeah, so he's going to come and tell you all what's been going on with those. And then on March 14th, we also do not have any hearing items at the moment. We're coming back, um, I think, remember the housing capacity analysis report. So now our consultant is going to come back and talk us through the housing production strategies that um, we've been talking with council with and kind of uh, talk about what we might be able to do to encourage housing production as we're required to do by the state, and we do that anyway. So we'll be back. So it was suggested, uh, because I read the meeting minutes, uh, that um, that we ask our land use chairs to join us uh, during that session. And I think that ties in with Commissioner Ernst's um, concern that we're not engaging our land use chairs enough. That would be a great meeting to invite our land use chairs to come and hear about the housing needs analysis. Okay, I can do that. Okay. If oh. that's okay with the chair. Um, I'm not the one who's going to invite them, so that's um, <laughs> probably fine with me. And I'll, I'll remind us all on the 28th that um, uh, Commissioner Losfeld, I think, is the only landscape architect in the room when we're 
hearing about the parks. So um, just to encourage ourselves not to try and redesign the parks, um, as many of us aren't qualified for that. Um, and we're well wait, past we're and we're exactly. the parks, to be clear. Yeah. They've been we've, designed we've, and been discussed exactly. and been vetted. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Just to be just to be clear, I'm an architect, not oh. a landscape architect. Okay. But I love the idea that I could possibly uh, daylight as one, moonlight as one. I think I think you could do both competently, both buildings and <laughs> landscapes. Um, yeah. Well, um, thanks so much, everyone, for um, the lovely time tonight. I think we've all appreciated spending Valentine's Day evening together. Um, since we don't have any other business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Just love it too much. It's not 8 o'clock yet. Yeah. No, uh, you know, former Chair Roosevelt, now that you are a commissioner, you can actually make that motion. You know that, right? My mic's not working. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Got a yes, motion? I second. I second. second. <laughs> Uh, we are adjourned. Have a great night, everyone. Night, Happy everyone. Valentine's Day. Thanks. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.